Hi, welcome back to another series of our solution videos. My name is David Wynn and I'm with IBM Cloud. In today's video, we'll be covering on setting up high availability on VPC. We'll be also be talking about a couple use cases on how to integrate new features with minimal downtime. So before we go into GUI, let's go ahead and talk about our topology really quick to give you a quick um, visualization of our setup. So a quick review, uh, VPCs are available in MZRs, our multiple zone regions, and MZRs are available across different parts of the world. Within the MZRs, there are multiple zones, and each zones are independent from each other to ensure single failure events are isolated from each other. In this setup, what we have is we have two zones, and within each zone, we have an IBM Cloud Load Balancers and multiple VSIs. The IBM Cloud Load Balancer will distribute the traffic between the VSIs within a given zone. The second zone will have the same set setup, and again, the Load Balancers will distribute traffic within the VSI, VSIs within that zone. Now to set up, to distribute traffic uh, incoming requests between the two zones, we'll deploy what we call Cloud Internet Services. CIS, for short, provides many different types of functionalities and features. In this case, what we'll be using is the Global Load Balancer. The Global Load Balancer allows us to create a server or an origin pool or what we call available pool. And then within the available pools, we have different origins. We can use what we call the weight to, dis um, to distribute the traffic between the two zones. And in this case, in this diagram, we're going to distribute equally between the two zones here. Now, um, if one zone is ever to fail, CIS will automatically route all the traffic to the only active zone here. Another thing you can use for use weight is to help to um, do patching or any maintenance work. What you can do is change the distribution between um, from 50 50 to 100 to zero. Zone one would be 100 percent, so that means all traffic be hitting zone one, and zone two will not be taking any um, traffic or any production traffic coming in. So two will gives you the opportunity to do any patching um, that you need to do. And when you're ready and validate, you can switch the traffic over to zone two. This also gives you an opportunity to validate all the patches or updates that you have done. If for whatever reasons, things did not go as planned and it's being disruptive, you always have the option to switch back to zone one because nothing has been done and still has to remain the original bits. Obviously, if zone two is working out fine, zone one becomes available to do proceed with your final uh, valid uh, maintenance and patching. One other thing I want to point out um, that's not specific to this environment is that in my case, I use a uh, web server on these VSIs to help demonstrate our demo here. Um, this could be easily um, expanded out to a typical um, three-tier application. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our GUI here. And without boring you to show you, having you guys watch me ordering and provisioning uh, my, the setup that we talked about, um, I pre-staged this ahead of time. So what I have set up is a VPC called DNHA Solution. And I have multiple subnets. So the two subnets that we are interested in is Region 1, Zone 1 Subnet 1, where I have a set of ESIs, and then a second uh, set in zone two, um, and I have a second set of VSI. So VSIs across two different zones. And we'll quickly jump over to the load balancers, and the same things. I will have two load balancers in each of the different zones here. So here's the first load balancer in zone two, and the second load balancer in zone one. One thing to keep in mind is that the host name that's provided um, for each of these load balancers, you want to copy it as you will need this um, for the next setup in the cloud or the CIS uh, global load balancing um, setup here. 
excited. Let's go ahead and go over there and to that setup and we'll go and talk through the configuration here. Now again, um, I pre-staged it. So under reliability is where the global load balancer is configurations done at. So origin pool or available pool is here. This is where we create it. And then within the origin or available pool, is where we created multiple origins, right? So I want to create two origins, one in each zone. Here's the first one for zone one, and the second one in zone two. And if you remember of the host names that I talked about um, about uh, 30 seconds ago, this is where you want to copy it. So this is going to tell the low load balancers to redirect traffic to these two different load balancers. Now, this weight is how we dictate the traffic is being distributed across these two different zones. So here I put 0.5.5, .5, which is going to be 50% to each of these two different zones. So I have a host here really quick to show you um, that's um, sitting outside of this VPC. So let's go ahead and go to our global lobes, our site here, global load balancer. And the first time we hit zone one. Let's see. Let's, let's try again. Then the next one is zone two. Then it's going to switch back to zone one and then go to zone two. So this weight is the one that dictates how the traffic is being distributed. So let's say now you have a maintenance, you have to do some patching, um, do some updates. You can use this weight to essentially redirect traffic all to a single zone while the other one becomes so, some sort of like inactive site. So how do you do this? You just change this weight to one, just to zero, and you hit apply changes. So what this is gonna do now is gonna re um, change the distribution between the two sites. So let's click, take a quickly, quickly look here. Now my weight is on read zone one and zero on zone two. So all incoming traffic will hit zone one now. So all new requests will always hit zone one. Second thing I want to point out is that uh, while zone two is inactive at the state or it's not taking any incoming, I should not say it's inactive, but it's not taking any new incoming, but any active sessions um, that we're using zone two will still be going to zone two until either it's timed out or the session has been terminated. Once that's done, then any, uh, if that same host goes to that zone or makes another request, it should get redirected to zone one. Now, while you're in the state, zone two is not taking new active. You can essentially um, do your patching or your minor fixes um, while all the traffic's hitting zone one. Once that's completed, you can actually test it by bypassing the global load balancer and actually hitting the um, load balance address directly and to validate. Once you do a quick validation and everything shows that's good, you can now change the weight over from making this zero and this become one. So now all your new traffic will hit zone two with the new patches update. If for whatever reasons the patches did not work out and it's causing problems, you always have the option to revert back to zone one and then make zone two inactive or not inactive by not taking new sessions. And the reason being is now zone one is back into play, um, has the original bits, and you go back to zone two and figure out what's going on there. Okay, so this is a, a one way to adding new patches and updates with minimal downtime. Eventually, um, you do the validations, you want to proceed with zone two, then change the weight back to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in each to bring it back to the original state. So another use case, what we want to do here is, let's say you have a new feature that's uh, beta quality and you want to test it out against production traffic. What you want to do is create a new zone, um, excuse me, and create a new zone with a similar setup. And we'll use the weight again to control the traffic distribution across the zones. The main goal here is that the new zone with the beta um, feature will have will handle a small subset of traffic from your production. To that way, it gives you the ability to test it out. Okay, so let's go back to our GUI here, and just to save time, I again I pre-staged it ahead of time. So I create a new one, a load balancer region one zone three. So what we need is copy our host name. 
And then if we go to our cloud load balancer, let's go ahead and add it to our environment here. So what we can do is um, we'll add a new origin. Let's see what region one, zone three. Go ahead, post paste that FQDN name, and let's go ahead and change the distribution here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make 45% uh, on each of these two first site, zone one and two, then make zone three handle 10% of the traffic. So once that's done, um, let's go ahead and take a quick look. Do you pull details? Um, it's because it's a new site, uh, it's going to show critical, and it's going to take a few seconds to become healthy. But as you can see, here's a new distribution, zone one, zone two. Is my original site and zone 3 will be your new site that you're gonna have uh, with your beta quality feature to test it out. This will conclude our solution video. Thank you again for joining me. Um, if you want more information please go to www.ibm.com forward slash cloud.